Yeah, Bruce, I asked Nigel this earlier. I want to get your thoughts on it. Why do you think this team has been so good on the road this season? That's uh, not the easiest thing for, for everybody. I, I'm not sure. I, I just think their focus is really, is really good. I, you have to be cut in. Um, you know, I, I think that's the, the biggest thing. Uh, maybe, you know, sometimes some teams at home, they feel like they, you know, are going to play free and loose and they don't realize you have to have that intensity at home too. That's how you dominate home court is, you know, by really being ready and, and defending and doing those things that make a difference and the things we've done on the road. I, but I, I, again, I don't know my uh, an explanation. I kind of joke with you guys that Mark had been so good on the road early um, and not good at home. You know, now he's been able to turn that tide and, and be pretty consistent. But uh, maybe the whole team kind of, you know, had his syndrome there that, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of it's the focus and your mindset, you know, how, you know, the game is, you, you know, you know, on the road, you have to be cut in, you have to be focused, all those words coaches use. And, and now they're, you know, maybe figuring that out, you know, home and away that you have to have to come with that uh, little bit of nervousness. I think that's, I think that's important that they, that they don't have a mindset, Hey, we're winning this game. They got, you know, mindset, we're going to have to fight our butts off to find a way to be in the game and, and have a chance to win at the end. You remember who first came up with the phrase road dogs? I, I mean, we've, <laughs> we've used it in the past. Um, you know, actually the first, the first Wichita game, I think was the first road game. You know, somebody talked about it there, you know, we got to be road dogs and uh, you know, they, it's kind of hung with us uh, throughout this, this whole season. And one more for you. Notice Nigel, you know, he's always pretty effective from three point range. Lately he's even had some nice driving layups, especially against West Virginia. Uh, what, what's been the reason behind that? His consistency or what he's, just, just getting more to the hoop and scoring occasionally. Uh, you know, um, people are overplaying them. I, I, you know, it's something he's worked on. Um, you know, it, it, it's the one thing we really t – I talked to him about, the coaches talked to him about after last season. Obviously, running him off screens, he, you know, that's – it's a special skill. You know, in this day and age, it's a unique skill. Um, I don't – it wasn't that one time, you know, years back. You know, that's what guards did. Now it's – you know, because of the workout guys, it's everything with the ball and, and they don't work on footwork, but as much as, you know, and Nigel was so good at that. Now we just said, you got to take a step when people lock into you and they, you know, now you get the ball. Can you, can you make plays? Can you, you know, whether it's the step back, whether it's the, you know, low, uh, you know, crossover and get, get by somebody and, uh, you know, he's worked at it, he, you know, and he know he added it, I guess, added that dimension to his game and feel a lot more confident about it. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Next question to Michael. Hey, Bruce, in what ways have Mark Smith's leadership qualities manifested themselves? You know, it's, it, I, I think, I, I don't know if I talked to you guys, I talked to somebody, but you know, we, the, the program came in the fall and uh, actually the Mac, one of our, the guys that was there came back on his own and uh, were, they were with us the other night, the West Virginia game, Mac was, and we had him talk before and after the game. So that was a nice uh, different voice. And I, I think they, the, the players, you know, connected with them and they've stayed in contact with them, but that group, uh, you know, they picked Mark as the best leader and uh, you know, and then, I don't think he had the confidence uh, moving forward until, you know, maybe about midway through the season. Uh, and I'm not sure what changed it. I kind of, you know, I, I joke with you guys a few times that, you know, I told them, Hey, they're not going to give you another COVID year. You can't, you know, this is it. You got to take advantage of every game. And, um, you know, I, I, because of that, he, he just seems to be much more, uh, you know, focus connected with not only himself, but with the, with the teammates and the coaches. And, uh, you know, he, he wants to do well, he, you know, he's made improvement. There's no doubt. I, I'm watching that Oklahoma state game 
the first one. And man, he made, you know, you, you forget he, he made some big plays. Uh, obviously, Nigel made the big shot down the stretch, but, you know, he, and he's and he's really done it consistently. So when you when you feel good about yourself on the court now, you you know, you can, you know, you feel better about being a leader and talking and saying the right things. And I think he's done that. You know, he's 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 been vocal, uh, not in like a loud or, you know, you know, but just a, a common sense you know, constant voice that, you know, we got to, we got to play at a high level. And then he's, you know, with the program, they talked a lot about, you know, there's a standard and you got to hold each other accountable, but first you got to hold yourself accountable. And, and Mark's done that. I, you know, he's been, you know, he's, there's no, you know, he plays hard. He leads us on to play hard by it's the biggest margin. We joked as a staff the other day, he's so far ahead of everyone else. I don't know if we've ever had that before. Um, you know, he's taking the most charges. He's, you know, the leading rebounder. He, so he's setting the example and he's and holding himself accountable, which now has allowed him to hold other people accountable. What concerns you the most about Oklahoma State? They're, they're probably, to me, they're as talented as anybody, any team in the league. Uh, and they have really good depth. Uh, you know, the, the big, we're going to have to be play better. Uh, I just told the guys just a minute ago when we left practice, you know, we, we got to be 20, 25% better than we were last time if we we're expecting to win at their place. And we showed them things we need to correct. Uh, uh, you know, they've, they've done a good job in the, in the past when we showed them things and, you know, made them aware and, and, and they, it's helped them connect with those things and, and pay attention, have awareness. And we've made improvement, but the, you know, the, we can't, you know, one, you can't let them get in transition, which means you got to run good offense, um, you know, and you to be able to, you know, stop them. Cause once they get running, they, especially at home, they can be start, you know, throwing those lob dunks and windmills and things like that. They, that's when they're at their best. And then, uh, then we got to keep them out of the paint. Um, you know, we didn't do a very good job of keeping them out of the paint, whether it was, getting to the hoop or penetrating and kicking, uh, you know, and then the first half, they kind of killed us on the boards, offensive glass. We did a better job in the second half. Obviously that's always a factor with us and it's one of their strengths. And what have you guys done to be able to kick up the tempo a little bit and still minimize turnovers? I just, you know, I think the knowing each other, knowing yourself, being the best version of yourself and it, you know, that was the emphasis today, uh, not trying to do too much. But, you know, a few weeks ago, and you you brought it up, you asked about, I think it was after Mississippi. You know, we I started a thing in practice. I, as soon as the ball goes through the hoop, we have seven seconds. They got to get up the court. And, you know, just making them run, getting to the corners. We showed them on film again. You know, when we show them things, they seem to accept it. And and they they see it because it's, it's a, you know, we always say film doesn't lie. And so now get to the corners, get that ball up quick, get, you know, get some good movement, um, whether it's a miss or a make. And I think that's been the big thing. And then not, not trying to do too much. I, you know, there's no doubt Marquise's progress has, you know, really becoming a, not just a, you know, I think his whole thing at Little Rock was the score. And now, you know, to be able to accept, you know, scoring at some times, but also being a playmaker, getting us into the stuff, you know, his improvement has obviously helped us with the, with the turnover part. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question to Arnie. Yeah, I wanted to ask a little bit about Nigel. Um, the other night he has 13 points and we're talking about him that being an off night for him yet. I think that's better than what he averaged last year. Is that, has he raised his game that and maybe the expectations that much? That I, you know, I, a different standard. Yeah, now. I don't think so. I, I don't think there's any doubt, Ernie. You know, it's, uh, you know, we, we talked before, he was just consistently getting 15, 17 points. And then obviously he had an unbelievable five, six game run, of, you know, games in the 30s and 20s and game winners and, you know, magical shooting performances. And, um, you know, a little off the other night, he even missed that little layup that could have really put them out of reach. I, uh, which he's been so good on that little floater. And we always say dunk it or, 
use the glass and he didn't, you know, he, that's the first thing he said after I know dunk it or use the glass. And he sure isn't dunking. So uh, you better use the glass on those, but uh, you know, I, I still, and I said it after the game, you know, we won without him playing, you know, being special, but at the same time, you look at his numbers, you know, six rebounds, I believe five assists, one turnover, a couple steals, and even, I, I think a couple block shots even. So, uh, you know, he, he, he did some other things that really helped us. And, uh, and he, and he guarded McNeil, you know, we, you know, we, you know, and McNeil, obviously the first time, 26 points, I think it was the season high, um, you know, Nigel did a good job on that, that part of it. So, and he's improved. He's improved on that end of the court. Is, and I guess, is that, that's something also the fact that he can help you now in, in other ways, he doesn't necessarily need to score. Does he seem to recognize maybe when he's having a, a rough night and adjust his game, do you think? Yeah. You know, and then if other guys play well, it really helps. And, so now he doesn't feel like the pressure's totally on him to force shots and get him up. You know, I, I would say, you know, on the year, maybe 15, 20 shots forced a little bit, which is, you know, one a game, maybe, you know, a couple games, none, a couple games, two, you know, so he, you know, he knows we need him to score, but at the same time, when other guys are playing well, then he feels more comfortable that he's able to play make and get some assists and, and do some of those other things to help us win. Also want to ask you a little bit about, about Mark. You talked about having recruited him at three different times. I was just curious how that all went and why, why you stuck with him, or did he finally approach you, or uh, how, did, how did that whole thing play out? Yeah, you know, the, the first time, I, I believe we were the first one. You know, his story, he was a baseball player, committed to Missouri, uh, didn't really play AAU, you know, he's a good high school player. Uh, you know, I, I, he has an injury. Uh, looks like his baseball career is not going where it thought, you know. So now, hey, I'm going to be a basketball player. And, uh, you know, Chris and I both have a lot of connections with St. Louis, our time at SIU, our time at Illinois, even the time here with, uh, you know, we've had several of those kids coming, you know, Xavier and uh, DJ and, you know, the Davion, obviously, and, so we've had a pretty good connection. Um, so we were there early. I, I saw him. I it was I was at my daughter's house for Christmas, um, and I saw him play. We offered that next week. We were the first one to offer. Obviously, it blew up. Uh, becomes Mr. Basketball in Illinois. Uh, you know, Illinois offers. Uh, you know, a lot of pressure in state. Uh, you know, you know, but leaves there after a semester. Uh, we went back uh, and we didn't have a scholarship. I, we went, Chris and I went and met with him and his family. We just asked them to be a little patient because I thought we were going to get a scholarship, which we ended up getting at the semester. But, uh, you know, but Conzo did a good job and, you know, got in there and he knew Missouri. Um, you know, so we, then we obviously we got got to play uh, you know, them and, you know, down in Paradise Jam, you know, we, his dad is all, you know, he knows Chris real well from back at SIU days. And, you know, he's always stayed in touch. He's actually texted me at different times, uh, you know, even when he was playing at Missouri. And so when he, they finished their season, uh, you know, he met with Conzo, told him that he wasn't coming back and called Coach Lowry and then called myself and I just said, we're not recruiting you this time, uh, but either you're coming or not. And he said, coach, I'm coming. So it was a easy sell. And uh, obviously it's, it's worked out, you know, for us and, and hopefully for him also. Thanks. Yep. Uh, next question to Tim. Hey, Bruce, your, your guys' win over Oklahoma State kind of started this this run of winning four of the last five. What are maybe some of the biggest ways that you've seen this team improve and, and take a step forward during during that stretch of games? Well, you know, if you really look at since we were 0-4, um, you know, what are we, 6-3 and three now or 7-3, or and three, right, or whatever it is, um, so you know, six and three, I'm sorry, six and three, I guess you 
depending on what you count the uh, Mississippi game, but in the league six and three, and then lost a couple others that, you know, you had a chance to win. So, uh, you know, we've, we've been pretty good since we got out of COVID and, you know, we got our, all the players together. We actually got to practice with coaches. Um, you know, we've been as competitive as anybody in the league, I think. So, you know, but, uh, you know, you, you have the heartbreaker against Kansas, um, you know, probably uh, uh, just a little bit of hangover against Baylor and they took it to us. And then Mississippi was, I thought we were ready to play. We just didn't play well. And they're, they're actually pretty, you know, good, solid team. And, you know, that one was that, to me, that hurt because I thought we could have won that game and it would have helped us in the long haul. But, um, you know, they give the guys credit. And then you talk about Mark's leadership, you know, Nigel, Marquise, they want to win. And, uh, you know, they're the ones that have, you know, I always say it's about the players, it's about them and their determination, their passion. And, and that's, you know, it's, it, that's what they've done, you know, the, just on the court, uh, you know, taking care of the ball, being a playing together, making one more pass, uh, you know, and I, I still think we can get better defensively. I, we have times where we're pretty good. And then other times we, we're not on our toes as much as we need to. Uh, but I think all those things just kind of their, their desire, their will, their, you know, uh, their, and their leadership. And then, you know, just getting a little better as a, as a individuals and as a team, it's kind of all added up to us having a pretty good run. And then obviously uh, your guys' win over Oklahoma State at home helped, helped with the kind of Nigel's clutch moment there, but, what what are maybe some some of the bigger lessons that you guys took from that game that you'll be able to use um, on Saturday when you head down to Stillwater? I think we just showed them we have to do a better job on the defensive end. We got to protect the paint. Um, you know, the first half they were uh, you know able to get some offensive rebounds. They gave them some uh, you know some second chance opportunities. I think those are the those are the big things you hope you learn. And, you know, it, and they they were that whole game. If you remember back, it was a game of runs. We would go on a run, take a lead. They go on a run. You know, and we were just fortunate at the end. You know, to make get that last shot, and Nigel make it. So I think that you know we just gotta if we're gonna be if we're gonna beat them at their place, we're gonna have to play better, especially on the defensive end, and do some of the same things we did offensively, but. Uh, make sure that we, we stop them and, and keep them off the glass. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Uh, next question to Ryan. Hey, Coach. Um, how important has it been to have Mike McGurl come back for this extra COVID season? And do you think that, that your team is even considered to be a bubble team or in consideration for the NCAA tournament without him? Um, you know, I, I obviously can't predict if you didn't have him, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm happy for, that he came back. I, you know, I'm happy he's had some success lately. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, Selton goes down with the injury. Now you're, you know, one, one man down and, and it, you know, gave Mike opportunity to step back into the starting lineup. Uh, you know, we all kind of challenged him, uh, you know, and, and he's, he's done. I, the best thing has been his energy is, uh, especially on defense, he, he changed the game, uh, in against Iowa State, obviously with some steals, deflections. If you go back and watch the Oklahoma State game, he had a couple of huge rebounds. He had a tip in, a tip in that led to another tip by Mark. You know all those little plays, um, and then he's just being, he's been pretty, you know, much more efficient on offense. So it, it all adds up to him helping us. Uh, you know, I, you know, I couldn't, you know, you can't have a better young man, and you you just want him to have success and. You know, and hopefully have a good finish to his his career. And I know he's going to be, you know, he'll have a chance to go play probably a little bit. And then, but when it comes down to it, he'll be a, whether he coaches or whatever he ends up wanting to do, he's he's going to be successful at it. Thank you. Yep. Our next question to Grant. Hey, Coach. Um... With how solid uh, Ish has played the last two games, have you considered inserting him back into that starting lineup, or do you like him off the bench more? I I think you know there may be a time where if somebody's small or some we could do that, but 
you know, I like right now, you know, him, you know, we want to keep Davion confident, make, you know, cause he, he's done some things better. He just doesn't, he's at, can't sustain it. Um, so, you know, we need Davion to play well, but we also, you know, we need Nish to play well. And I, I'm happy he's had a little success, uh, you know, and, and feels good about himself. Again, we challenged him a week ago and I said, you just, you got to give us something. And and I think the big thing he's, some of those, you know, tip in some up around the hoop. He just, you know, he, he can't just be one dimensional. And then if you don't make a shot, now you're totally useless. And so he's doing some of that other stuff and that's kind of give him a little, I guess, a little confidence, a little energy and, and, and hopefully helped him and helped us. And then the last thing I got for you is, I mean, obviously you just mentioned, you know, Mike as a possible coach after basketball. Mark's been talked about as wanting to coach after basketball. Are those the only two guys you think that uh, have it in them? Or is there other guys on the roster that you think could coach? I, I think there's uh, actually Marquise is, I've talked to him about it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I think Luke probably wants to do something uh, down the road. Um you know, I, there's there's quite a few guys that uh, you know seem to have an interest in it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Ish wants to do it down the road someday too. So, uh, you know, it's and that you know when you ask about the group, the group they care, they like basketball, they like being around it, uh, which is which is always helpful. Thank you, Coach. Safe travel. Yep. Any other questions before I turn it over to the TV guys? Okay. Coach, just give me just a second.